Ballarat is a major regional city located in Victoria. It's one of the richest gold fields to have ever been discovered. But this area isn't actually as rich as it appears, and I'll explain why in this video. Ballarat is deceiving in many, many ways. And this deception cast by this ancient landscape has led to the city surviving and prospering when really it should have died when the gold ran out. But that's the thing, it never did. Because beneath the rivers that were hit so hard during the earliest days lay older rivers, buried deep, sometimes beneath dozens of metres of thick basaltic rock, and other times it lay up to a hundred or so metres below it. So when these initial waterways were exhausted, the deep digging began. Tons of gold were pulled out of these ancient rivers, and then after much of this was exhausted, Ballarat faced a problem again. Now around this time, when the gold that was mined from the present day rivers got exhausted, Ballarat was more or less given two choices. Invest in exploring for more river gold, also known as alluvial gold, or resort to crushing quartz. In the late 1850s, hard rock machinery was primitive to say the least, with ore crushers being invented around this time for this purpose. The gold that hadn't yet been eroded by the eons that had passed since it was originally shot through the fractures within the earth in a molten state was still there, tied up within the quartz, with it sometimes being visibly tied up. And gold in quartz was visible everywhere around Ballarat around this time. In every place that wasn't covered over by a basaltic lava flow, more or less lay a gold-rich quartz vein outcropping on the surface in a very proud and pronounced stance, due to the fact that it was more erosion resistant than the surrounding sediment, and often quartz veins would be interlaced with rich amounts of very visible gold, sometimes shot all throughout the many fractures that existed. And this is where Ballarat gets a little cheeky. The early towns to start crushing did so because the quartz veins that were mined paid an amount that was more than the operating costs of the mine. But this type of mining was stupidly expensive. Many different machines were required and large amounts of capital was often necessary for one of these companies to even have a chance of getting off the ground. So it had to be a damn good bit of gold rich quartz for them to actually be able to profitably mine this. But in Ballarat, the quartz was shit. Seriously, it was absolutely trash in its yield. Most companies back then tried to get an ounce per tonne at the very least around this time. But in Ballarat, the quartz barely gave 4 grams to the tonne. This is just an average, and in rare occurrences it was more. But in general, Ballarat has some pretty shit quartz. So why the heck was there so much gold that had been eroded from the quartz here? And why is the amount so pronounced in Ballarat compared to the surrounding gold fields which have quartz veins that have a much higher ratio of gold per tonne than what's found in Ballarat? Well, it has to do with the height it's at. That's right, the height because Ballarat is more or less the top of the dividing range in this part of Victoria. And as a result of that, it's eroded much, much more than the surrounding topographically lower lands. Meaning more gold has been deposited here as a result of more quartz being worn down to a particle size and releasing the gold that was interlaying within it. And because of this, things got tricky. Because quartz was everywhere, but you had to crush tons upon tons for it to even have a chance of being profitable. And that was almost impossible to do at this time in the late 1850s. So Ballarat saw an incredible amount of companies go bust in a decade that followed. Many, many people lost their entire fortune. And many others got swindled when people would offer false promises to investors. Or make falsified discoveries, where they'd lie about the yield per tonne. But amongst all the trash, a few companies learned to work around and even to benefit off the low yield quartz that existed in Ballarat. The Black Hill Mining Company is one such example of a groundbreaking and extremely profitable mine that operated here for 40 years. And during that time, it tore the mountain here asunder, creating an entirely new valley within it, as they bulk crushed an incredible amount of ore, and utilized a very smart and money efficient way of transporting it, utilizing a hard rock miner's best, or worst friend, if they fall down their shaft, gravity. But in general, if you're a small time prospector, I'd advise you to not waste your time looking for hard rock ore here if you actually want to make a buck. But then again, I could just be f***ing with you to keep all the quartz to myself. Nah, I'm just joking. Or am I? Yeah, I am. There's a great book about this called The Astonishing History of Ballarat, Volume 3, and it actually mentioned the amount of quartz that was necessary to be eroded to release the amount of gold that was found in the alluvial days of Ballarat. And it touches on the difficulties of setting up a hard rock mine here in the 1850s onwards, and the many challenges and successes that occurred, 
in the spectacular gold fields of Victoria, and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.